Welcome back everyone. Today we're going to be talking about uh, form validation and making sure that when you submit your form you get a visual representation whether it's been a success or failure. So just to demonstrate that I've got a form here. If I click submit we get a uh, red pixel border and we get a red icon. If I type in say test.test.com and hit enter this one changes. However my password still needs to be longer than six characters so I'm going to type one two three four five six. Uh, sorry six characters or more so i'm going to hit submit and then this one also turns into a success okay in the interest of keeping things as short as possible and concise what i've done is created a basic html and css structure there's nothing fancy going on here i'll just quickly blast through but i will also leave a link down in the description please feel free to take this code and do you know whatever you want with it uh, essentially there's a, a cdn call to font awesome here and we're just taking in um, basically their styles because we want to use a some font awesome icons so we've got a, a tick and a cross based on success or fail and then we are also wrapping each element so in this case um, our email but then down here our password we can have as many as we want of these in um, some form controls so that form control is going to be the parent and what we'll do is this is position relative and based on whether it's a success or failure we'll add a class onto this so success for example and if you notice there's a, a green border now with a green icon and then likewise if we change this to fail we'll get a red border with a red x and just to show you what's happening from a css point of view um nothing fancy up here just declaring some default styles resetting everything putting everything in the center and um, down here we are just adding some uh, box shadow around this to make it look nice and then on the form control what we're saying is if the form control has also got a class of success change the border to be one pixel red uh, sorry green and then likewise if the form control success change the icon to, uh, to to be the color of green well so set that tick and then the do the complete reverse of that so if the form control also has a, a fail class change the input to be border one uh, one pixel solid red and the icon to be red so enough about that let's go ahead and get coding with the javascript so our javascript file is completely empty and if we console.log um say hello world save that bring up our console and we do get hello world so we know that this file is working over here great let's close that down and next what i'm going to do is just set some variables that i want to use and i'm going to grab the form so form is document dot get element by id and i want to use form here and just to show you where i'm grabbing that from so this form id is just grabbing the whole form so the thing that wraps the whole you know the entire thing here it's got an idea of form then i'm going to say const email is equal to document dot get element by id and email because we want to target the input and again just show you that where that is so on on our input here we've got an id of email save that and const password is equal to document dot get element by id password and as you can imagine that's just our password down here so what do we want to do first of all we want to add an event to watch for whenever the form has been submitted so i'm going to do form because we're targeting it up here and we'll say add event listener and then in here i can add like on click or you know on focus whatever i want to add a submit um, listener and then this is going to take a callback function so in here I can do something and let's just say console.log um, form submitted. Now before we do this, we obviously need to prevent the default behavior. So within HTML, whenever I click submit on a form, the default behavior is to go through and submit that form, whether it's through to a PHP file, whether it's through to itself, it, you know, it just knows that it needs to submit this form. So what we need to do is we need to say prevent the default behavior how we do that is we take in an event here so e we can call this anything we can say event i'm just going to keep it as e for an event knock down onto a new line and i'm going to do e dot prevent default that's a function so save that and now we won't get that reload every time that we hit submit i'm going to come over here reload and click submit bring up our console and we can see that we've got form submitted so it's preventing it from loading so we'll see up, uh, up uh, the um, you know the fact that there's no refresh on the page and every time we hit submit the form is just saying form submitted okay so first things first let's grab the values from the inputs 
and let's just work with um, the email first. So I'm going to say const email value is equal to email dot value. And let me just save this and show you this. So cons uh, console dot log email value. Because up here we're, we're referencing this element so we can just grab the value straight from it. So if I put something in here, say test and click submit and we're going to get test and if i do some exclamation marks we're going to get test with some exclamation marks down here okay but obviously if someone puts some spaces in here we're going to get some spaces at the end of it so you can see that um, and we don't get that here so what i want to do is make sure that we trim that off i'm going to say trim and come back over here do test exclamation marks with a bunch of spaces hit submit and we don't get those spaces at the end of our our words now that means that we can just handle this a little bit better if someone you know makes a mistake and hits submit or the browser is behaving strange for whatever reason we just trimmed the white space off the end okay so now what i want to do is i want to check email so i want to if email is successful so in here i'm going to pass in another function i'm going to say check email and then i'm going to pass it the email value so we're going to create this check email function down here but if it's true let's just say console.log um successful success um valid email let's say else let's just say fail invalid okay so we're going to do a check in a function that we're going to create now and we're going to pass in whatever we type in here let's go ahead and create that function so i'm going to say function check email and it's going to take in a parameter so let's just say email and then i've got a regex over here which i've copied like you can just get plenty of different regexes on here so uh, javascript uh, check email success regex something along those lines and it will give you you know there's, there's pages and pages of it so if i go into the first one um you know like use this regex so i'm going to copy and paste mine again as i said you know the, all of this code will be um on the, the the code pen which is has got a link down at the bottom so it saves you typing this out because it's quite long i'm going to say return and then paste in my regex here and then i'm going to say dot test so i want to test what is it i want to test well this email that we're passing in, passing in here so test this email based on these arguments here and don't worry if you if you're not familiar with regex basically all it's doing is, is a set of arguments to say to, to make sure that it's you know a valid email address which is like a you know some characters followed by an at symbol followed by some other characters followed by a top level domain so like a dot com so you know chris at test dot com is and that's what this is doing so because we're returning this 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 argument here will return a true or a false a false so um, all this is going to give us is uh, check email will be true or false. So let's just go over here, hit reload, and I'm going to say Chris and hit enter, and then and we get a fail. That's an invalid email. But if I say Chris at test, we also get a fail. Say Chris at test.com, we get success. This is a valid email. So now because we've got a success and a, in, and a failure, what we can do is we can handle the class and the, the elements around uh, sorry, we can handle the classes that um, target our border, you know, to be one, uh, you know, a green pixel and, and a tick and whatever. So to do that, what we need to do is we grab the email up here. So I can say email dot current element because I don't want to add it to the actual input because I need to make sure that I target the um, the, the tick as well. So I, I want to say the parent element, which is going to be the form control. And then I'm going to say class name is equal to. Well, I want to make sure that you've still got the form control, but also have success. So if I save that, come over here, put in a test at test.com, and hit enter, and we get a success. So for the reverse down here, I obviously want to just change this and set it to be a fail. So fail and then i'm going to say test and i get fail but if i do test at test.com and hit enter it switches over to a true 
perfect. So now all we need to do is rinse and repeat and um, put some form of validation around our password. And again, we can do, you know, many different ways. You know, you could say, you know, grab some regex and say, like, I only want lowercase characters or I only want uppercase characters or it's got to have a certain amount of numbers in the string. For example, we're going to do something just really simple and we're just going to make sure that is over a certain length. So first things first, what I need to do is obviously need to grab the value. So I'm going to say const password um, password value is equal to password dot value dot trim. Again, we're just uh, cleaning up that password field and then down here I am going to say um, if uh, if password value dot length is greater than or equals so that is uh, so this symbol here is greater than um, or equals I've just removed the space now as soon as I remove the space my, my visual studio code just turns it into a symbol that I can recognize so greater than or equals so I'm gonna set that to six and so if password.length is greater than or equals six then we know it's been success so i'm going to say um, password dot parent element dot class name is equal to as you can imagine form hyphen control success else let's just copy this down and say fail so we're checking the password value, which is getting grabbed up here. We're going to make sure that it's equal to six or more characters. And then we're going to just do the exact same thing as what we've done with our email, which is set the form control to be a success or a fail. So let's hit enter. And that is wrong. So what have we done wrong there? Uh, form control. I've spelled that wrong. So hit enter. And we get a fail. Let's do test at test.com. Hit enter, we get a success. One, two, three, four, five. Still fail. Six. Submit. And I've spelt it wrong again. Oh, because I've copied it down, didn't I? Let's let's go over that again. So test at test.com. And then one, two, three, four, five. Still fail. Six. And we get a success. And that's all there is to it. So as I said, you know, I will leave the code down below in a in a link over on CodePen. But if you do have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment down below and I will get back to everyone as quickly as possible. Until next time, take it easy.